Hello everybody, good morning or afternoon. It's actually afternoon, it's Sunday. And I'm in the process of um, mixing up, well not mixing up, I've already mixed up, but this Chino glaze here. And I'm just now putting the pots into the top of the into the top of the kiln. I've already packed the bottom, put the shelf across, and now I'm on the top. I'm trying to keep it uh, minim minimizing the number of shelves. This is the first glaze firing I'm going to be having in this converted electric to propane gas kiln. So, and this is also the first time that I've actually ever really mixed up a Chino glaze, and that I'm using that. So I'm a little bit. Um, I'm having to be a little bit. I'm not trying to do anything complicated. I've just, I've got some pieces here which have now got the Chino glaze on. I must say it's a, it's a lovely glaze. I, I like it. It's got a lot of clay in it, which means the the outside is not powdery. Um, so they're okay to pick up, even when they're glazed. I'm debating on some of these. Uh, for example, here, small tea bowl, um, which has got a Chino glaze on, which I've done a little bit of our iron oxide decoration decoration on uh, because I want to see what how the iron oxide beha behaves on top of the chino and I know a lot of it is to do with the thickness of the chino whether it's thin and then another layer on top making it thicker etc anyway um, I've got a my usual mess here on the work on the work table of <laughs> of indecision and pots in front of me and trying to um, trying to fathom out which pots uh, to glaze and um, there's a number over there we can have. I need some taller shapes just to put in so let's uh, let's glaze a few things and we can get them down there in the kiln. Let me just uh, see if we can just bring the camera down a bit here for you. I know you're all experts at glazing but sometimes it's hang on. Okay. I'll do it from that angle. So you can see. Okay, so here is this lovely Chino glaze, which is a sort of it has a sort of I don't know, it has a I guess it's the soda ash that's in it. Anyway. Always handy a sponge, of course, and some water to, to clean off. That is always essential. So I've got that there. Now, let's just have the bucket here. All right, look, here's a bottle. Let's glaze that one, okay? Now, a lot of people, and they're not sure how to glaze certain shapes. Okay, now in this case, and a lot of it can depend on the size of your bucket and how much glaze you've got in the bucket. All right. So now this particular one, I'm going to I'm going to roll. Are you familiar with rolling? That is, you literally dunk it in like that, and then you have to roll it like this. You see, in the glaze. But oh, I've got some more glaze there. Just going to pour a bit of glaze out into this, into this recycled two and a half percent fat reduced milk container, which I use as a as a as a pouring jug because it's cheap and cheerful and it works. <laughs> So what we're going to do is I'm going to pour a bit of glaze just inside there, okay? We're going to swirl it round, we're going to turn it like this, and now we're going to pour it out, okay? And as soon as I pour it out, I'm then going to dunk it down in and turn it, because it's still got air in it, so it's floating, you see? And there he is, done. Alright, now when you put a pot down that you've just glazed, where your finger is on the top, will leave a slight mark. If you lift your, if you lift your hand up like, there like that, you'll find 
the, the glaze will run down your finger well which give it a nice little drop on the end there which you can just place strategically where you need it okay that's that one what else dee, 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 dee. yeah what about that that big one there um, incidentally this 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 jug I did I'll just mention this all right and this is one of the jugs you saw me. Do you remember I was using the fettling knife? And I, after I'd, after we'd, I put the hand on on everything while it was still cheese, uh, leather hard. I shaved it just there with a the knife to present a sharp edge. Well, of course, after I gl day glazed this, before I glazed it, in fact, I took a bit of water and just put it there on the edge like that. You see, just a little bit of water. In other words, it's already pre-primed with water, that little edge. So it's not going to absorb so much water, so much glaze, thickness of glaze at that point. Anyway, I glazed it and and before it dried, I just just caressed it like that to again bring that sharp edge uh, into focus, as it were, because I want that to remain a sharp edge there to assist in the pouring. Somebody asked, well, why, do you, why are you doing all this? Well, the whole point is that when you pour the liquid out of the jug, when you put it back like that, the sharp edge there cuts the drop off, so the drop isn't then pulled over the edge and runs all the way down the side here, makes a mess on the table. That's the idea of it. It works up to a point. Ha, huh. so, right. Ah. So, so we've got some glaze here, we've got some glaze in there, we've got this fella. Now this guy, you see, ooh, not going to get him in there, are we? Neither is there depth enough, so I'm going to have to be clever here. Oh, I've got to also remember that we have a hole in the bottom here, so if I'm pouring any liquid, <laughs> any glaze in there, it's going to pee out the bottom. So I'm going to put my finger, wet your finger, put it over there like that. Okay. Now we're going to pour some glaze in like this. This is a, this is actually a lamp stand. You could argue, well, it doesn't need to be glazed on the inside, does it? Well, you're right, it doesn't. But we'll do it anyway. Okay. So we glazed him. Now what I've got to do is I'm going to replenish my jug. All right. I'm going to dip just the, the top there like that. I'm now going to hold it there where I've dipped it. I'm going to wind my arm up like that. Now I'm going to pour the glaze over, over like that and unwind my finger. You see what I'm doing? There we are, glazed. Give it a couple of shakes. Boom, boom, boom. Don't drop it. <laughs> that could be embarrassing. All right, and you'll find, now then, I'm gonna hold it like that for you to see. Now you can see there's, there's, there's marks up there, you see. Now we can, we can easily just, can't we? Just touch them up. All right, now I'm gonna put that down there. Slide him carefully. Onto the table. We'll be ready for clean up in a minute. So. So, what else have we got? Alright, well we've got this guy here, let's do him. Anything that's got any kind of, remember this is one of those pots that uh, we, we smacked, didn't we, with a, with, a, with a wooden spoon that had the, the, sla the slotted spoon. But anything like that could have a tendency to trap dust, so make sure just in there it's particularly particularly clean. All right, now this one I think is going to be a double dipper. Yeah, we'll make, it, we'll make him a double dipper, this one. So, down like that, and then... Okay. I showed you how to do double dipping, I think. Of course, after glazing is 
clean up. <laughs> Not one of my favourite jobs, I have to admit. But I had a little bottle that little bottle I made. Um, let me see if I can bring the camera a little bit closer and we'll demonstrate how we do the rolling the rolling trick. So we're gonna get that down there, get it in focus. That's it. Okay, there we are. Alright. Well first thing I'm gonna have to do of course is pour a little glaze on the inside there. So it's gonna do that. Give him a little swirl around, pour him out. Like that. Okay. Now, now we're gonna do that roll trick. So down into the glaze and roll him like that, you see? Whoop. Don't drop him there like I did then. <laughs> There he is. Put it on the board. Maybe I can demonstrate a... Well, I've got your attention there in a bucket. In the bucket. Yeah, okay, well, let's see. What about this little bowl? Got a little fluted bowl here. Oops, beg your pardon. Are you still there? There you are, good. My camera tripod legs they stick out rather. This is a little fluted bowl. I'm going to I'm going to dip him in shino. There's not really much dust on here, but I'm just being cautious. Okay. Now then, I tell you what. You see, depending on where you want to take the glaze to, if you just want to take it to to about there, just past the past the the natural you know the, the change the change of shape when it gets to there you can take the glaze just past there but not up to the foot say about halfway that sometimes is convenient place to stop the glaze in which case I would just hold the 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 and, and double dip him like that okay I'm just thinking of actually I want this completely glazed all over so I'm just going to do holding it like that I'm just going to pass it through the glaze. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Now, if you've got a foot, don't forget to make sure there's no glaze left trapped in the foot. Okay. Okay, put it there. What's that? Now then. Let's just, let's just pull out the camera again. Oh, we're not on the zoom, are we? Okay, I'll just st stand the camera back a touch. So I'm just casting my eye over the table here. Other oddments that. Yeah. This bowl. Now, as this is a. I'm kind of an experimental a little bit here. So, you know, if you dip a glaze, you can let it dry a touch and then just give it, just giving it on two sides only, just an extra little dip, because that'll give me a bit of extra thickness there and that'll contrast with the other two sides of the pot that haven't. I didn't do that. Oh, what fun. Oh, wait a minute. Here, we get this jug. Maybe we can. Be an awkward customer. This guy could be an awkward customer. Every now and again, give your glaze a stir because it will sediment out. Actually, this glaze is very good because it's got a lot of clay in it, so it's not really it's not really sedimenting out that much. Um, yeah, yeah. The bucket you see is small. Next time I mix up this glaze, I'll mix up three times the amount and put it in a bigger bucket. Just wasn't quite sure with the recipe that I had and the amounts that I had, what exactly it was going to give me, you know, in terms of, in terms of quantity. 
Why don't we just pour some glaze into here to start with. Let's pour some in the jug. Swill it around. Okay, now we're going to pour it out, turning it at the same time, okay? As you do that, and then you'll get it out without leaving any any parts that are... I've got to be very quick here because the glaze is already drying on the rim on that one, so... Whoops. A bit too hasty. Okay. I'm going to do, have to do a poor job here. Okay. You know when you're glazing like this you have to... Okay, where my fingers have been here, I can touch up afterwards. Some people don't like to touch up where their fingers have been, but... Each to his own. You can touch up or not. I don't think, it, for me personally, there's no virtue in leaving it just where your fingers have been there. So, I've got a bowl here. By God, I have. A bowl, so let's just have a look. Let's just see if we can... Now you see a bowl like this in a small bucket like this presents quite a few problems, doesn't it? How am I going to get that in? How can I get a nice even coating of glaze over there? So I'm going to have to be a bit nifty for this number. Um, okay. Right. Let's just pour a bit more of that glaze out. You see, you have to pour. You have to learn how to pour. So we're going to pour inside this bowl. First of all, I'm going to pour inside. I'm going to turn it, pour it out, then I'm going to hold it like this. And then I'm going to, I'm going to have to pour the glaze, but I'm going to have to be very careful when I pour it, the glaze doesn't run off here and just run on the table. So it's got to be held in such a way. Do you get me? Ooh, let's go. So pour in about a third or so. Now you're going to have to Okay, now holding it like that, pour this a bit, a bit cleverly. Now I'm going to pour in the foot ring as well. I'm also going to let this just dry a, a little bit and I'm going to just randomly pour a little bit just down the side. Just for fun. Just for fun. Do you ever do things just for fun? Okay. I, I think we're we're ni we're ninety nine percent there. Any little places where I, I didn't quite make it, well, I'll just I'll touch them up. Okay. So that's that. Now I wanted to quickly. If you do make a little mess while you're glazing and it a bit goes on the table, don't panic. All right, it doesn't matter that much, or you don't want to pour, waste all your glaze on the floor, of course, but you know, stuff that goes on the table sometimes can be recuperated. So let's take here one of these pots, for example, that I've done. Now, what we're gonna do is, what I generally do is just scratch off a bit like this. Okay, and then using your fettling knife, okay, you can, Move your thumb up and down by the, by the end of the blade there, okay, to determine a depth that you want to clean back, okay. And then using your thumb as the guide, you can clean back only to a certain, a certain depth, required depth, whatever it is you decide. Okay, clean sponge. And I'm going to just 
clean off your bottoms thoroughly, okay? And that'll prevent sticking to the shelves. All right, now, this particular one doesn't have a seal on it. So what I'll do is I'll put a, a um, um, with, with iron oxide underneath uh, there. Let's just having a look here. Here's another one, for example. Um, Okay, this this bowl. So we're just gonna. This is left. Left, the glaze is left on the inside there. And clean back a margin. Allow, in other words, just you know, use your common sense. If you think, oh well, this glaze when it when it gets up to temperature and it melts it could run therefore I need to leave a little margin for for that a just in case margin if you like to call it that um, and then sponge it you can you, you can leave an eighth of an inch a quarter of an inch or whatever now underneath here there is a seal which is pretty obscured by the glaze. So just with my fingernail, I'm just going to lightly expose it, but not too much. Something quite nice about a seal that's a little bit, you can see it, it's visible, but it's a little bit supple, you know, it's a little bit hidden. But anyway, we, we, we want to, there's no point in having it so you can't see it. Sometimes with certain glazes, they'll, it'll show through, you know, the, the glaze. Others will cover it more, all right? Okay, well, there's more to do here. I've got to do to get on with. <coughs> so I'll do that, and then we're going to get these into the kiln. I'm hopefully going to do a clip with you, with me just loading them into the kiln, into the top of the kiln, just so you can see. And then we'll be going to be firing the kiln as well. Okay, sign of each thing. Keep practicing. See you soon. Do, do, do.